Nuster has managed to evade capture for years. The identity of the mountain man remains a mystery. Jonah, I need to see you in my office. In a minute. Buster's Small Heart is a film that was released on April in a few cinemas around the United States. The main character, Jonah, or Buster, is played by the talented Rami Malek, which you probably know from Mr. Robot. To start off, this is probably one of the strangest and most confusing movies I've ever seen. Some critics even say that it's too weird. I'm the prophet of the second inversion. The movie has a 70% on Rotten Tomatoes, but the problem is that many critics are focusing on Malik's performance, which is without a doubt brilliant. But still, the movie has a lot to offer. I can almost assure you that years later this movie will become a classic, since it is very weird and very different. In this video essay, I will be explaining the whole meaning behind the movie and why it's such a brilliant piece of film. This video will contain spoilers, so I recommend to watch the movie first. To summarize the plot, the film is about a three tenuously contacted parallel storylines. A mountain man named Buster is survived by breaking into empty vacation homes while ranting about the Y2K to radio shows and phone sex operators. We also see how Buster is hunted by the police. We jump to his memories of being a family man, Jonah, who spends his nights working at Jerry Hotel and his days in a claustrophobic house with his hostel in laws. When a weird man shows up and tells Jonah about a millennium theory called the Inversion, he sends Jonah down an increasingly dark and lonely path. Meanwhile, in some other place and time, Jonah is on a boat, lost at sea. The song Starving in the Belly of a Whale is played at the beginning of the film. Being on the belly of a whale is a recurring theme in the movie, especially at the end when the two versions of Buster are in the boat. One of them says, Lockheed eats one of us and spirits the other. But what is this about? Why in the belly of a whale? Well, there is really one place that has the answer to it. There is a passage in the Bible called the Book of Jonah. This story from the Bible has a lot of parallels from Buster's small heart. This story is also known as the story of Jonah and the whale. The passage opens with God speaking to Jonah, commanding him to preach repentance to the city of Nineveh. Jonah found this order unbearable. Not only was Nineveh known for its wickedness, it was also known as the capital of the Assyrian Empire one of Israel's fairest enemies. Jonah, a stubborn fellow, did just the opposite of what he was told. He went to the boat to hide from a god, far away from the city of Nineveh. In response, God sent a violent storm, which threatened to break the ship to pieces. The terrified crew cast lots, determining that Jonah was responsible for the storm. Jonah told him to throw him overboard. Afraid of God, the sailors finally tossed Jonah into the sea and the water immediately grew calm. Instead of drowning, Jonah was swallowed by a great fish or a whale which God provided. In the belly of the whale, Jonah repented and cried out to God in prayer. Jonah was inside the whale for three days. God commanded the whale and then vomited Jonah into a dry land. This time Jonah obeyed God. He walked through Nineveh proclaiming that in 40 days the city will be destroyed. Surprisingly, the Nainvets believed Jonah's message and repented. God had a compassion on them and did not destroy them. Again, Jonah questioned God because Jonah was angry that Israel's enemies had been spared. When Jonah stopped outside the city, disappointed about God's decision, saying that he wanted to die, God provided a vine to shelter him from the hot sun. Jonah was happy with the vine. But the next day, God provided a worm that ate the vine, killing it. Growing faint, 
in the sun. Yuna complained again. The story ends with God saying, You have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend to make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concerns for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left hand, and also many animals? The passage ends with this question, a question that in Buster's Law Heart is brilliantly showed. The whole film is centered around two decisions that Jonah has to take, going to preach for the people from Nineveh, or hide from God, hide from his reality. The city of Nineveh is basically the whole place where the film takes place. You see how the people at the hotel act, how Jonah's boss acts. You see how the people where Jonah and his wife are saying treats them. In the Bible, God tells Jonah to preach repentance in Nineveh. The character of Brown is like God in some way. He tells Jonah about the common invert that will happen in the 2000s. Take in mind that this movie takes place in the year 1996. So isn't it 4 years away from the year 2000? Just like God told Jonah in the punishment, which was gonna be a big apocalypse that will happen in 40 days. In the Bible, Jonah is thrown overboard by the sailors. This never really happens in the movie, nor we see him in a big storm, but we can assume that that's how Jonah got in the boat in the first place. First, he got into a boat with the sailors, and then after a storm, Jonah most likely jumped off by himself into a boat escaping from the storm. Also in Buster's small heart, Jonah loses his family. This is a parallel from the Bible when God gave Jonah a vein, which Jonah didn't took care of, and the worm sent by God ate the plant and died. We see how Jonah lost his family, how he takes care of them, but there is a small worm that was currently making them discuss about their lives and how they want to be a normal family. Family is given to him as they go in the hotel. Jonah doesn't really pay attention to them, and that's why God himself takes them away from Jonah. Calling radio shows and phone sex operators, and going on homes telling people about the upcoming inverse, is basically what God told Jonah to do in the Bible, preach for the people from like that. The frog that God gave Jonah in the movie, I think is a representation of the plant that God gave Jonah in the story from the Bible. If you remember, the plant wasn't taken care of and died just like Jonah's family in the movie. Because in the movie, instead of Jonah saving the frogs, he just starts eating them. Just look how both scenes come from each other. In conclusion, Buster's My Heart is about a man trapped and knowing what to do with his life. We see how religion is a big part of Jonah's family. We see how everyone is so blind in society. The movie itself is complicated, which is good. Honestly, in my opinion, this film deserves so much more. The many films for the past decade hadn't passed these barriers, and I think this past year, especially in 2017, we are seeing original films that not necessarily have to be about a superhero or a money maker Hollywood extravaganza. Buster's Small Heart is in some way a step closer of telling Hollywood that we don't need garbage movies. Buster's Small Heart is a reflection of ourselves, how we are stuck just like Jonah in the middle of the ocean, not knowing what to do and many times asking for a second chance and also many times we are just so blind that these second chances without us knowing are also given to us. We just need to fight for them and be patient because even though you're hiding in the middle of the ocean, this decision will be there. At the end of the movie we see Jonah in the beach. In the back, we see his family walking towards him because he realizes that the only way of getting out of the belly of the whale 
is confronting himself. Los ríos de Babilonia, yo volveré.